All right, so we have done a ton of graphing of parabolas, but there is one form that we haven't talked about yet, and that's what we're going to learn today. It is called intercept form. Now, we've done graphing in standard form. Standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And intercept form is y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. And that is also what we know as factored form. Okay? Now, you'll notice with my examples here, this list right here has grown a little, hasn't it? Yeah. We did those three things. I'm adding three things to it. Okay? So, the first thing we're going to find is the x-intercepts. What would you define x-intercepts as? Uh, where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay? It's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So, in other words, it's going to be something, comma, zero, and usually there's two of them, something, comma, zero. So it would be like 3, 0, and 5, 0, or something like that. How do we come up with those? Well, we factor. You remember our friend the snowflake? Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I still don't understand. You can do this without the snowflake. I'm out of here. Dee -dee. Dee -dee. Dee -dee. Dee -dee. Yes, you can do it without the snowflake. I've been doing Thank it without God. it. <laughs> but a lot of people, once they're familiar with the snowflake, yeah. they just stick with it. So I put 1 times 21 is 21 on the top and negative 10 on the bottom. I put x and x, and I need two numbers that multiply to get 21 and add to get negative 10. Negative 7, negative seven. Negative seven. Negative seven and negative 3. So that means my equation could be rewritten as y equals x minus 7, x minus 3. The original way it was given to me was in standard form. Now that I have factored it, it's in what? Intercept form. When I have all those parentheses, that's intercept form. So, what do I get as an answer from here? I get x equals 7, right? And x equals 3. Remember, we changed the sign of those. So what are my intercepts? They are 7, 0, and 3, 0. Pretty easy. How does that help me graph it? Well, do I have to go back to that negative b over 2a thing and go from there? No. Let me show you how you're going to get your, your um, vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these two intercepts on my x-axis. So I'm going to find where does x equal 7 and put a point there. And where does x equal 3? Right there. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Your vertex will occur exactly halfway between those points. So if I think about my xy chart, what is exactly halfway between 3 and 7? 5. 5 is the x-coordinate of my vertex. So then if I fill in my values here, 4 and 3, 6 and 7, yeah. I know that 3, 0 and 7, 0 are points because I've already plotted them. Right? Mm -hmm. So I just need to find out what goes with 4 and 6 and then what goes with 5. Now, do I plug it in here at the original standard form or the intercept form? It doesn't matter. Actually, you can plug it into either place and you'll get the same answer. So if I plug it in, I'm going to plug in 4. I'll do it to the original one just for kicks. 4 squared minus 10 times 4 plus 21 is negative 3. And that mirror image means this is also going to be negative 3. And then finally the 5, 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 21 gives me negative 4. Can I fill in the remainder of my parabola now? 4, negative 3, 
5, negative 4. So what am I going to put on my line for my vertex? 5, negative 4. Five, negative four. Do parentheses matter? Yes. Yes. Oh. Hugely. What is my axis of symmetry? X equals, X equals 5. Do I have a maximum or a minimum? Yes. A minimum. A minimum. And that minimum value is? Yes. Negative 4. Before I get into domain and range, are there any questions about what I did? Uh-uh. If anything, you would put y equals for that. But, yeah. So, what did I do? I factored it to get my two intercepts, and then how did I get my vertex from there? Vertex is exactly halfway between there, and that's what helps me start my xy chart. Now, Let's talk about domain and range, okay? Let's say, well, first off, um, have you heard those two words before? Yes. Please tell me you've heard them. Okay, good. What do you know about domain? I don't know. It's when you add all of them together and then... No. Domain has to deal with left to right. So I want you to be thinking X, like your X axis, when you're thinking domain. Range has to do with up and down. So I want you to be thinking about why. So here's what I'm going to ask. Let's see if I can describe this in a way that will be helpful for you. If I had two walls here, okay? Now, I, I know my walls are vertical, but they're going to move horizontally. So they're going to squish in left to right. My question is, I'm finding domain because I'm squishing in left to right. Is there a place, if I wanted to find out how wide this graph was, is that how wide the graph is? Yes or no? Why no? Because there's arrows, aren't there? And those arrows mean that that graph is continuing what? Up and out, correct? So if I could use my fingers to pinch this and zoom out, which I can't, but if I could, would there be a place where my graph would no longer be going out? No. no. It would keep going out forever and ever and ever and ever. I would never be able to enclose it, right? So that means from left to right, there's nowhere I can put a wall where it's not going to affect my graph. Yeah? That means my domain is what we call all real numbers. There's nowhere I can stop, so all real numbers are possible left to right. It, okay, let me tell you. I draw two lines. It's kind of like the paragraph symbol. Like that's your paragraph symbol. Make it an R. It's a it's a legitimate mathematical symbol that means all real numbers. Okay. Usually everyone's looking for a shortcut. If you want to write all real numbers, you are welcome to write that. Okay. So now for my range, my range, I'm going to take my rulers and I'm going to go the other way. So if I wanted to see how tall my graph is. Would I say this is how tall my graph is? No. Because this one, I definitely have a spot where I have to stop. It would have to stop right there, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this one have a place to stop? No. No. So what does that mean? There is no highest point, but there is definitely a lowest point. I have one place where it's like a wall where it's bouncing off it. So that means my y values are not all real numbers because there is an end point. Are all of the y values, meaning is my graph, above this point or below this point? Above. Above. That means my y values are all greater than or equal to whatever that minimum value is. What's that minimum value? Negative, Negative 4. You already identified it, didn't you? What if my parabola was upside down? How would that change? 
it would be y is less than or equal to instead of greater than or equal to, okay? Now that's something that will be a little bit fuzzy for a little while and we'll just keep hitting it and hitting it and hopefully it'll solidify as we keep practicing it, okay? I will tell you this, every single parabola we graph in here will have a domain of all real numbers. The only time it would change is if your parabola lays on its side and we're not going to graph those. Okay? So you should at least be able to get your domain every single time because it's going to be all real numbers every single time here. Okay? For parabolas. I may throw in a little mean worksheet that I was looking at, but I don't know where it is right now. Oh, it's right here. I found it. If I threw in a little worksheet like that, Whoa. you've got parabolas. If I wanted to know the domain, you just find left to right, and the range you find up and down. Okay? Once you understand domain and range, it's really easy. You just got to keep practicing it to get it. Okay, number three. Let's graph this. How do I factor this? I can take out an X, and what would be left inside? X minus 2. Okay, so I have two intercepts. I need to get one of my intercepts from here, this X out front. What do I get from there? Remember my intercepts are something comma 0 and something comma 0. What do I get from there? Well, I know from here I get what? I get x equals 2 there. So one of mine is 2, 0. What do I get from here? No. Because if it was 1, it would say x minus 1. It would just be x equals 0. So one of my x-intercepts is 0, 0. Yes, when you have x times x minus 2 and you're trying to find your answers, from here, you set x minus 2 equal to 0, correct? You add 2 and you get x equals 2. Well, here, if you set this equal to 0, there's no solving. It's already there. So it's just x equals 0. So those are my two intercepts that I've got going on here. Okay. I only had two terms, so I didn't need the snowflake. I could just take out what they had in common. So go plot those x-intercepts on your graph. Zero, zero, oh. And two, oh. zero. <laughs> Where is my vertex going to be? One. How do I know it's at one? It's in between both of the intercepts. All right, so I picked one because it's right in the middle. So if I pick my values around there, 0 and negative 1, 2 and 3, which ones do I already know? Zero, zero, I know 0, 0, and 2, 0. Mm -hmm. So I need to find what negative 1 and 3 are. Those will be the same. And then I need to find what 1 is. Now just for fun, I'm going to plug this into the intercept form this time. So that would be negative 1, parentheses, negative 1 minus 2. And I get 3. So far, so good? Yes. Now I'm going to plug in 1. That would be 1 parentheses 1 minus 2, negative 1. Ooh, bad Franken. I forgot something on the last problem. I would lose one point for myself. I didn't draw in my axis of symmetry. Make sure you draw that in. Don't lose a point like Franken just did. Okay, so what's my vertex? Well, let's graph it. Negative 1, 3. 1, negative 1. And 3, 3. All right, what's my vertex? 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1. Parentheses important? Yes. Heck yes. X is a symmetry. X equals 1. Does this have a max or a min? A minimum. 
Minimum value of? Negative one. What's my domain? All real numbers. All real numbers because since we're always going up and out, we're always going to have all real numbers for our domain. All right, all right, all right. Guesses as to what my range is? Greater than or equal to negative one. Because negative one is that wall on the bottom and everything's above there, so that makes it greater than or equal to. And the last thing, because I don't want to lose another point, draw in that axis of symmetry. Capiche? Capiche. Okay. Now let's look at number four. It's already an intercept form. Do you see that? So, what do I get from here? X equals negative 2. And from here, X equals positive 2. Yes, because you set it equal to 0. And by setting it equal to 0, that process changes the sign. So, what are my intercepts? Negative 2, comma, 0 and 2, comma, 0. Let's graph those. Negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. 0, 0. Zero is exactly halfway. That's where my vertex is going to be. Right? Negative one, negative two, one and two. What do I know on this XY chart already? The negative two, zero. Negative two, zero and two, zero. Let's go plug in negative one. So, parentheses, negative one plus two and parentheses, negative one minus two. I get negative three. What other value is also negative 3? The 1. And now 0. 0 plus 2 in parentheses and 0 minus 2 in parentheses gives me negative 4. So fill in the rest of our graph. I'm going to draw in my axis of symmetry. And now I got a bunch of information to fill in. What's my vertex? Zero, negative four. Zero, negative four. What's my axis of symmetry? Zero. Do I have a maximum or a minimum? A minimum. And what is that minimum? What's my domain? All real, All real numbers. And what's my range? That's it? That's so like number two. Mm-hmm. If it's, if it's going up, yes. If it's going down, it'll be less than or equal to. All right, last one we're going to do together. What are my x-intercepts? Oh, negative five, zero. Negative five, zero, and negative three, zero. So go plot those. What is my vertex that I'm going to start off with? What's right in the middle? Negative 4. So fill in your values around. And I know negative 5 goes with 0 and negative 3 goes with 0. So now what do I do? Plug it in. Now notice there's a negative sign out front. So I have a negative parentheses. Negative 2 plus 5, parentheses, parentheses, negative 2 plus 3. And I get negative 3. Now I'm going to go change those negative 2s to negative 4s. And I get 1. Negative 2, negative 3. And negative 6, negative 3. Now, what's different about this one? It's going down. Why is it going down? Because it's a negative on... Um, yeah, it's because that A value is negative. Same exact way it was in standard form and in vertex form. If that beginning thing in front of that first parenthesis is negative, you've got a parabola opening down. Oops. All right, so what's my vertex? Negative four. What's my axis of symmetry? 
Do I have a maximum or a minimum? A maximum of one. Of one. What's my domain? All real and what's my range? Y is, y is less, less, than, or less than, than or equal to one. And it's less than or equal to because it's opening down. Not too bad? All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Happy studying.